Oh yeah, it's your boy Crypto Blood. Welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is June 25th, 2018. It's a late one, I know people, but I still gotta get it in. Gotta update you guys on the latest in the crypto world. Wanna give a shout out to my man Raj Pre. He wanted me to play some B.O.B. Peace, peace. I ain't never heard this one before, but this sounds nice. I like it, it's groovy. So definitely thanks for the song request, Raj Pre. And I hope you guys are doing well out there in YouTube land. Yeah, man, today look like we're continuing our bounce off of those lows. I'm starting to think really that leg down, that additional leg down we took was probably from the hack, $30 million hack. They just delayed in selling the funds in my opinion. So we saw like a day or two delay post the hack of BitThumb out in uh, South Korea. So I'm thinking that was the last leg we had going down was the market trying to absorb those sell-offs from the hacked funds. So we'll see, it's all speculation. Uh, we'll probably never know, but it looks like we kind of bounced off of those lows and now we're trying to get back above 6,600. That to me is a critical level. We'll take a look at that in detail. Before we get into the swing of things, I want you guys to jump over to CryptoBlood.io. If you want to support me, support the channel, support the movement, you got to buy my merch, people. I don't have a Patreon account. I don't ask. I don't have a donation link. Nothing like that. If you want to support my channel, jump over to CryptoBlood.io. Pick you up one of those tees. We got a couple of crypto inspired tees, some Crypto Blood tees as well. So check them out, people. Got a wide variety. For you to select from so now that that's out the way let me get back to this market we're currently at 256 billion dollars total global market cap for cryptocurrencies bitcoin's dominance is at 41.78 percent again like i said the last 24 hours as you can see this column is slightly green we're trying to make our way back up here and the one still hit hard on the seven day is eos i did buy some EOS yesterday at like seven dollars and eighty five seven dollars and ninety something cents so I'm looking good right there Cardano down hard Litecoin for the seven day time frame is looking pretty bearish as well but uh let's let's see if we can make our way back up people I'm hoping that we can and we just got to take it day by day at this point our next target as I've stated is getting back above that 6600 it looks so far away but really is not it's only 300 points away which is about five percent from where we are right now that can be done in one day you know how the crypto markets are so that's my target got to get above there for me to feel bullish again in this markets right now i'm still bearish so let's go ahead and get into that first article this is out of the daily hodl the title of this article is tron responds to security concerns as new network generates first block tron founder justin sun says tron's new and independent network has generated its first block and the platform's token migration is complete says tron has completed token migration from erc20 to mainnet the community's consensus initiated the tron network and generated the genesis block which signifies Tron's official independence. Tron has left the Ethereum network with the goal of becoming a faster and cheaper competitor to Ethereum. The platform is trying to tempt Ethereum developers to create decentralized applications on its platform. Tron has also released a virtual machine to make it easy for developers to create on the Tron network. Sun dismisses security concerns though. Tron's founder is also responding to criticism about the code powering the Tron protocol. According to the new report from Digital Asset Research, Tron's developers copy code from the Java implementation of Ethereum in ways that could trigger technical issues with the platform's blockchain. In an interview with Coindesk, Sun addressed allegations of plagiarism and said Tron takes the security and stability of its platform very seriously, pointing to the company's $10 million bug bounty as proof. Sun says here, yes, one of our programmers did forget a very small thing that he didn't put on. However, it was so long ago and it was a very minor issue at the time. It's kind of like saying I'm 27 now and when you were four, you messed up with this one goal kick. It doesn't really make sense because it's very insignificant in the bigger picture. So it says here tomorrow, Tron holders will start voting for the network's block producers known as super representatives. It will then move forward on making its new roadmap a reality. So what do you guys think about this? I'm just now starting to really get into 
what Tron is all about. It's been a lot of fun around them as well as EOS. And I think a lot of that is because of individuals that have a lot at stake with Ethereum. And they probably have normalcy bias, cognitive dissonance. I don't know what name or whatever you want to label it, but whenever something is threatens what you believe in, it's human nature to really lash out at that source that's threatening your beliefs and what you think is going to be successful. So that's just how it is. And you're going to continue to see these types of things. I'm excited for EOS and Tron. There are a few other ones out there as well. What I call, and I say this blockchain 3.0, I know some people say blockchain 2.0, but I would consider Ethereum a blockchain 2.0 platform. But yeah, these blockchain 3.0 projects are exciting, man. And they're really going to take us to the next level and bring more adoption and awareness to cryptocurrency industry. Let me know your thoughts on this article. Um, this bug seems to have been just a minor issue um, back when they started and doesn't necessarily have impact on the future of Tron. Are you guys excited about Tron? Let me know your thoughts about that. I'm still doing a deep dive into the project. And uh, at the end of that, if I think it looks good, I'm going to definitely scoop me up some of those tokens. Second article out of CryptoVest, Institutional Buyers. Bitcoin ETF seen as the catalyst to turn crypto bears into crypto bulls. It says here after Bitcoin's price tanked over the weekend, dragging down the prices of other cryptos with it, there's renewed talk about what could turn crypto bears into bulls. Much of this crypto discussion piggybacks on previous talk about the catalyst that could move crypto prices higher, especially Bitcoin. Over the weekend, Bitcoin's price fell below 6,000 to around 5,900, while it quickly rebounded, trading higher about 24 hours after plunge. Crypto's fall caused observers to start speculating over how the space is in need of something measurable to move the cryptos in it higher and become more stable. This article, I'm just going to stop real, really quickly. This article really piqued my interest because I was talking to a buddy of mine over the weekend about, and it's actually been an ongoing conversation that I've been having with some of my peers in this space. You know, what will be that catalyst to really move the markets up? I, I mean, it, there's been good news this year. You know, I just don't know when the sentiment would change and if it would, it would be any one thing that would kind of spark that move. Institutional funds definitely are setting up to come in. Uh, I'm just not too sure how that's going to look. If they're buying from exchanges, probably going to come through big custodial accounts like at Coinbase, what they're structuring. You know, I did a video talking about this insider news that I was uh, privy to regarding Coinbase and this particular financial firm in New York looking to go through the Coinbase to, to start uh, buying funds or buying Bitcoin on large scales. So I think this is coming. I really do. And it's going to happen this year. Um, my target, and someone asked me this the other day, I think I can safely say that we should see Bitcoin, you know, north of nine ten thousand dollars by the end of this year in my opinion i think that is a realistic price target for the year end for bitcoin um and and i would even say that's without any institutional funds coming in now if we get institutional funds really get going coinbase you know sets their whole infrastructure up for custodial accounts then maybe we can see even higher than than uh, ten thousand dollar bitcoin by the end of the year so um i say all that to say i think that an etf would be one of those things <laughs> it would be one of those things that will spark some buying pressure kind of get that fomo attitude back under the markets for cryptos and uh, it would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. People would just start buying because they know that the ETF is a bullish fundamental news event. So it says here, the elusive ETF. For years, crypto observers have talked about a Bitcoin exchange traded fund being key to propelling the crypto's price higher. Many were enamored by the Winklevoss twins' efforts to bring one online, but they were quickly disappointed by the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission 
with a no way response to their idea. Still, many won't give up hope. This includes Ari Paul, who co-founded Block Tower, a cryptocurrency hedge fund. If and when there is a Bitcoin ETF in the crypto world, Paul believes it could propel Bitcoin's price to 35,000. Michael Strutton, the CEO of Ironwood, seems to agree. He posted a Medium post Sunday with his thoughts about what could move Bitcoin's price higher. He wrote, let me describe how easy it is. Once the Security and Exchange Commission allows Bitcoin ETFs, anyone with a 401k, IRA, or an investment account, like with the following top five broker dealers, could invest in Bitcoin with a simple click. No wire transfer or credit card fees. No explaining Coinbase, other crypto exchanges, and security hurdles. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't think of it that way. Uh, the top broker dealers he listed were Fidelity, Charles Schwab, Edward Jones, Ameriprise Financial, and TD Ameritrade. Hmm, I wonder why he didn't include E-Trade in that one. Come on in, institutions. Another catalyst that would drive Bitcoin's price higher is the entry of more institutions who invest in the space with the launch of the Bitcoin futures contracts by CBOE and CME group the institutions are increasingly warming to the space article goes on to say snagging the institutions one of the biggest hurdles in attracting institutions relates to getting them comfortable with cryptos being a part of a legitimate asset class a move by the intercontinental exchange or ice which is the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange, could help that. We've reported how it is launching a trading platform that would allow investors to purchase Bitcoin. So um, I agree, you know, as much as I don't want... See, the problem with that I have is that, and, and this is where I disagree with Bix, with institutional funds come regulation. They're hand in hand. The institutional funds won't come without regulation. So the regulators are going to come in, impose the rules and restrictions they want to and then the institutional funds will come right behind it they're going to the regulators are going to lay the groundwork or pave the way for institutional funds so it, you can't it's, it's like a double-edged sword yeah you want large sums of money you want to bid under the under the market you want liquidity because that's what institutional funds do that's what they will bring to the space however it's the gift and the curse because you have to allow regulators to come in to the space so with that comes, you know, derivatives, regulation, and it's just going to be the same thing that we were trying to escape, or most of us originally were trying to escape. So it's just the irony of the whole situation. You guys got to let me know how you feel about that. And we know that if they do come, we it's, I'm not going to ask the question, is it going to be good for cryptos from a price perspective? We know that it will be, but how good, like by how much? What order of magnitude increase in cryptocurrency prices or market cap will we see from this uh, if they do come in this year? Uh, I think they will start to come in till end of this year, probably not during the summer. A lot of that, a lot of the dealings and Wall Street are off at the Hamptons chilling, you know, spending the money that they scrape off the top from all those hardworking Americans that pay into their 401ks every month. <laughs> But in the fall, I think we'll see some of those deals inked and boom, that's when the races will start. So again, let me know what you guys think about that. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. And uh, again, get over there to CryptoBlood.io, people. Pick you up a shirt, support the movement, support the channel. That's pretty much it today, people. I'm out. Holla.